how's it going today? Other than like just crazy busy trying to figure things out. You know what? The day is good. It has started off very calmly. So I'm happy with that. That's good. Not putting out fires, which is great. (laughs) (laughs) I understand that. That's sometimes the start of my day. So yeah. What time does your days usually start? Um, depends on my son and depends on my workout schedule. So sometimes if I don't get a chance to work out, I'm up at like 515 to do a Barry's class at six with some friends and then start my day after. But my son's up at seven. So I got to be up at seven to get him ready to go and off to school and organize, making good life choices so (laughs) it can be early yes and was it uh busy for you guys when your son was not in school because that must have been crazy I'm not a very good elementary school teacher I'm doing grade four to five math um I'm realizing maybe isn't my best subject yes (laughs) (laughs) and he's the complete opposite of me so I'm high energy and actually quite scattered and he is like so he's autistic but he's like he's so amazing he's in high level competitive sports he's in um you know like a cbe totally um yeah like i don't know if it's normal or regular but just like a cbe school he's not in um in a private or special needs school so he started that way and it was amazing for him and equine therapy helped him in sports and martial arts and so he's uh he's killing it but he is yeah he is the opposite of me completely so i have to have a lot of patience and i think he's got a lot of a lot of patience for me too the yin and yang and you know shows that you know there's different individuals out there and how we work together right and a new yeah. book life. <laughs> yeah. He uh, he's very patient for me and very understanding. He's like the little old man, and I'm like the kid sometimes. Other than like the responsible mom duties, which I'm good at, but you know the way he sees the world is pretty wise and pretty big picture. And I don't think he always understands concepts, and he comes out with the most profound, amazing things that always you know teaches me something beautiful. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I knew a couple of kids growing up as well that were autistic and just brilliant. Their minds, the way they think and see the world. And you're like, holy smokes. Well, thanks for that perspective. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And of course, watching NFL on a Sunday, he knows every stat, every player, every penalty. He can watch five games going on at the same time. He knows exactly what's going on, whose contract is whose, who's been traded, who ha- you know, who has what stats and who doesn't. He does it for hockey too. So yeah, he's, he's a pretty- diehard sports guy. He is the stats kid. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. So what is what is those sayings of your Oh, this is actually lyrics to a Darius Rucker song. So I don't know if you've ever heard the song This by Darius Rucker. Don't know. Okay. <laughs> well let me So it says, maybe I didn't turn out like I planned. Maybe that's why I'm such a lucky man. For every stoplight I didn't make, for every chance I didn't take, all the nights I went too far, all the girls that broke my heart, all the doors that I had to close, all the things I knew but I didn't know. Thank God for all I've missed because it led me here to this. I don't know really how I got here, but I'm so glad that I did. And it's crazy to think that one little thing could have changed all of this. That's, that's powerful. Oh my God. I just didn't think you wanted me to sing it because it would have hurt your ears. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yeah. So it's quite a song just basically like saying that, you know, things are pretty awesome. And, you know, even when you think that you're going in the wrong direction or something sucks, like everything ends up being, you know, perfectly beautiful in the end. And the song's just like such a happy reminder of that, especially on days when you feel kind of defeated. And so, yeah, it's a good song. You, you know, it sounds weird to say this, but Megan, you get defeated in life. Oh yeah. All the time. Yeah. All the time. You, you know, doing martial arts and practicing that for many years, um, since the age of eight years old, has that um, created some strengths that you think you wouldn't have if you didn't practice that art yeah um I mentioned this before when I've when I've spoken um kind of publicly I guess and it's uh and I and I say it actually privately too and and when I'm with my students sometimes and um 
when I'm mentoring and teaching Team Canada, but martial arts has saved my life over and over since I was a kid. And, um, you know, on really bad days um, at home and, uh, you know, getting severely bullied and some of the things that, you know, like every kid kind of, it happens to them as they're growing up. Um, It gave me sort of a place where I got to feel like myself. I got to feel um, like present in my body. I got to feel like I had an outlet for movement. I had an outlet for my anger. I had an outlet for my sadness. I had an outlet for depression and anxiety. Um, And then there was, you know, some things that happened to me in life from a young age um, and some of the assaults that I'd been through and sexual assaults. And I think martial arts gave me a channel for that PTSD and a channel to kind of, I mean, I mean, martial arts is fighting, but it's not fighting all at the same time. And so I feel super lucky and like, um, I, I think that martial arts really gave me almost everything until my son. And then once I had my son, martial arts made me a better parent, a better person, helped me to fight for things that um, I thought that I couldn't fight for on my own. It was a nice distraction. It was a healthy outlet. So martial arts is, uh, has been everything to me in all of the ways and in all of the levels and for everything that I've kind of decided to do at that high level as well. It's really interesting because I did martial arts. Uh, I started at four years old. Hapkido. So That's awesome. I Korean, love that. Korean yeah. martial arts. And, uh, yeah, it's good. Hapkido is awesome. Oh, yeah. And, you know, it's a four. Uh, it's got Taekwondo in there for about 4,000 movements. But it was, I don't know, maybe a well-rounded individual. Martial arts, like you said, it's not all about the fighting. It was everything else but the fighting. Looking back, you know, the self-discipline, um, making sure your fingernails were cut. <laughs> And if not, you would get spanked with the wooden bamboo sword. Oh, the shanais. Yeah, I experienced that for a very long time. Oh, yes. I honestly think, though, like, because I grew up with ADD, ADHD, and, and I think that it gives us, and it gives a lot of people in life, like, superpowers. But if you don't have, like, sensory regulation or um, body regulation or mind regulation in a positive way and, like, martial arts taught me how to speak. It taught me how to focus. It taught me how to get up in front of people. It taught me how to super self-regulate and have structure and have boundaries and have like self-respect and respect for others and respect for people that are older than me and respect for people that are younger than me. Like there's so many benefits. It's crazy. I love that you get up keto. It's awesome. (laughs) It's so fun. (laughs) It definitely paid off. Yeah. 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 I find that in me, like it was such a gift. And then I find that just the diverse type of students that we have Mm -hmm. as well in the different styles that we have, um, because I'm able to teach multiple disciplines and then my studio is too. It often like helps people find their best fit and their best type of regulation, the best like environment for them to kind of manage that energy in a healthy way. And yeah, like I love the fact that there's more options out there now and more resources and oh my yeah. God. yeah, yeah, and just the amount of stretching and uh, the running. You know, it it's not just working out as well. It's your mind, the way you. Fo- it's such a beautiful art and uh, discipline. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's a throwback for me for sure. I know it's like the best. <laughs> it's like you come home for a second and you can relate. Anyone that's in martial arts, you're like, yes, we have that connection. You yes. know how it feels like in your heart and in your soul. And I have to admit, like even doing forms. So like, I guess, poom say for you and, and poom say, poom say for me too and katas and things like that. Like it is my meditation and it's totally my grounding and it's how I recenter myself and it feels like home for me. Oh yeah. And then remember remembering all the patterns. Yeah. The poom says, yeah, yeah. It's good stuff. It's good oh stuff. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It, it definitely is a meditation. Yeah. Holy. And then getting getting tested on it and seeing do I remember things and and it helped with memory, didn't it? It did. And and it's kind of nice because when you can kind of put those feelings and those experiences into words, it's kind of great because really it's overcoming anxiety. It's overcoming um the thought that you might be a failure or a disappointment um, or, or feel embarrassed. Like it just, it helps you overcome all of those hugely stressful situations like later on in life. I mean, if you ever have to go to court or if you ever have to public speak or you ever have to do right. something in drama class. Yeah. yeah. Like it helps you overcome that. Yeah, it's not almost a physical uh, hit back that you have to take. It's, it's that mental 
uh, strength that and calluses you build on your mind and your soul. Yeah, it is. And it's just like, it's such a good um, feelings example for the rest of your life. And if you can overcome a testing and you can overcome being in that situation, I mean, you got good foundation for other things. Oh yeah. Uh, there was a sign I grew up with at the dojo that it said, um, the blood and sweat on your uniforms kind of creates you as an individual I'm paraphrasing this, but creates you as an individual. And I think it's so true, isn't it? Like that hard work uh, at the end of the day, you're like, holy smokes. I, I and for me, it was vulnerability. What do you mean by that? Well, it's like martial arts. You're in such a vulnerable, like environment and place and you're doing vulnerable things like fighting's not normal and sparring's <laughs> not normal. And <laughs> like, Friday night sparring. <laughs> yeah, it's not normal. And so, yeah, you're, a, you're with a bunch of other individuals that are kind of like taking risks and putting themselves out there and showing their own vulnerability with yours. And you're trying to figure it out. It's pretty great. Oh, absolutely. We know an individual, Faisal. Uh, he's a great guy, by the way. Shout out I to Faisal. Him. I adore him. I adore Faisal. He knows that. Oh, he knows yeah. that he had the most beautiful wedding and his wife's amazing. And I just, I'm in awe of his career and I'm in awe of what he does for the city and the business community. I just, he's a good, good guy. Yeah. And he's so well-rounded and such a, if people know him, such a nice man and so chill <laughs> and kind and generous. Yeah. Holy. Yeah. And what he's done with his uh, platform is amazing to a highlight local entrepreneurs and businesses, but really dive deep into um, how to better yourself. So it's not just showcasing something. It's saying, here's some different angles of how you can apply it to your business or your life. And uh, I love that about his exchange platform. Yeah, it's a very different way of approaching um, businesses and entrepreneurship mm -hmm. and different ways of, you know, sharing some of the pitfalls and some of the feelings around it. it makes people feel not so alone in the business community, which I really like. Yeah. You were really vocal during the pandemic about how you felt about certain things were you always that person or do you think you realize oh my god this is who I this is a strength within me that I can now apply and say confidently of how I feel because oftentimes uh, we're afraid of backlash judgment fear of what others think well um I'm not liked by everyone I, I I'm okay. okay with that <laughs> I'm not pizza but, but not everybody be likes me. <laughs> but um, becoming okay with that is a scary thing because oftentimes we want to be accepted. We want to be liked by everybody. How did you realize I'm okay with that and truly being okay with that? Um, I actually had quite public hate um, from individuals and I have for a very mm -hmm. long time. Um, it's something that I've had, I mean, even in the martial arts community for gosh, like over 20 years, um, especially like I had people writing letters of hate to people I was doing interviews with and awards I was winning and people telling, you know, um, interviewers and, and people in the media that mm -hmm. I was undeserving of awards and that I, you know, wasn't a good martial artist and I wasn't a real business owner or martial artist or, or anything like that. And I mean, reading some of those was heartbreaking. Um, and I mean, like, <laughs> For me, the most important thing is that my son thinks I'm doing okay and that I have integrity and that I'm doing a good job. And then for me, if I, if my soul and my heart at the end of the day, when I'm laying in bed and I'm trying to go to sleep, it says I've tried my best today and I've done the best I could. And if I've made mistakes, I've apologized or tried to make those wrongs right, or I've learned from them, or I've tried to grow and be better moving into the future, then I think I'm okay with the fact that you know, I'm not everybody's favorite. I'm not everyone's cup of tea. Not everyone is going to resonate with the things I have to say. And I'm okay with that. Um, and it, and it makes me listen to other opinions too. It makes me keep my mind open to other opinions and other situations and people's feedback. And even, mm -hmm. even some of that negative feedback, like I want to learn from that and see if there's truth to it and see if it's, you know, something that I can evolve from. But, work yeah. on and grow and and oftentimes some of the failures and the lashback yeah there are lessons in there but then sometimes there are not and some people can be trolls and can be you know 
I hate to say this, but envious of someone else's growth and success because oftentimes they wish they were in that position. And that's something that is not talked about a lot is um, envy. And, you know, if Megan's doing this, well, how dare she, you know, let's try and tear her down instead of building her up because at the end of the day, it's, uh, I, I just can't say, fathom the time or energy to put into negativity um, versus and look in a way that someone's, oh, I'm jealous of this person or I'm angry at this person. More or less, I'm inspired. I've never looked at it in a, in a dark way. I'm, I'm always happy because I think, you know, if you're winning in, in your realm and, and dominating, it's like, I can take those analogies and apply it maybe into podcasting, maybe into things I really enjoy doing and say, I want to do the best I can. It's never a straight path. We know it's all over the map, especially as entrepreneurs. Um, failure is a part of it. Um, struggle is a part of it. Making mistakes is okay. You know, we, we get hit for making mistakes in our life. And I mean, we're not perfect. I don't, I don't know. No, we're not. And I really do feel like there's also um, a lot of misunderstanding in the world. And there's a lot of misunderstanding being an entrepreneur. And there's a lot of misunderstanding being a business owner. And there's also a lot of misunderstanding um, with how I've chosen to be a martial artist and how I've chosen to run my studio, how I've chosen to grow my career, how I've chosen to um, like reach certain and particular goals that I thought were really important to me and really valuable for me and for my learning and for my growth and even really for my resume. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a lot of people that never saw it that way. Like I'm pretty unorthodox in how I fight. Like I'm a right-handed Southpaw. That's about as unorthodox as you can start yes. doing. I mean, I, you know, have a black priest yet in Muay Thai, but because I have like, you know, a six degree, uh, black belt in, in karate, which I just got on Saturday. Okay. So I got to update your, uh, <laughs> I just got that. On Saturday. Yeah. yeah. Congrats, um, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> so I got to update all that stuff. Um, I just think that the way that I've approached things has been very different typically. I mean, if anyone's watching Cobra Kai, I don't want to do any spoilers, but I mean, I was a baby of the eighties and I started doing martial arts in the eighties and, you know, studios are ran um, very differently now. And especially with how I'm feeling and what I've learned and in my, like, I, I like testing. I like elevating. I like doing things that better myself and, and re-educating. But the more I do that, the more I learn and the more I change my business and the more I change my teaching style and the more I change my approach. So I think sometimes it's a lot of misunderstanding because I don't do things like right. I have integrity for the traditional martial arts that I teach. I just don't teach it in a traditional way. Interesting. So the traditional way would give me an example of something. Uh, bamboo swords for one. <laughs> I mean, if we're going to bring up like something we both have in common, like I'm not hitting kids in the leg with a bamboo sword because their stances suck. Like, no way. Their stances, A, don't suck where um, we were taught that, in you know, unless it was one particular way, it was wrong. Well, you had to take into account like, you know, the way that students' bodies are and the way their body mechanics are and, and if they have any challenges and what their growth is at the moment. Like, you know, I'm watching little 12 and 13 year old kids that are having knee and ankle problems. So they can't do a completely square stance because their ligaments are still growing. I mean, I, 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 and you remember you'd get beat for that. <laughs> if yeah. Scared. Yeah. I don't like, I don't like to beat children. So yeah, I mean, I'm trying, I, I, I don't have the same military style, of discipline that I grew up with. I don't have the same, um, like I felt honestly, when I was growing up in the martial arts community, when I was young, I felt a lot of disappointment, a lot of shame, a lot of belittlement, oh, yeah. a lot of, yeah. Whereas I'm not there to make people feel that way. When I teach them, I want to make them feel confident and able to achieve goals and happy to be there and having fun and feeling positive and having a community and feeling like I'm a resource for them to grow, not the opposite of how I grew up. So the new way of teaching or whatever it is now, will they still have the discipline and the, what we learned or how we went through martial arts? I think they do because I think, um, I think the world is changing and I think it's evolving and I'm, I'm, I'm staying optimistic about that and like that evolution. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's the only thing that, I mean, if, if you're believing the other side, it's going to be a real bummer for you, but I believe that I'm, I'm kind of optimistic and 
I think that the more that you show people how incredible and strong and talented they are, the more that they want to keep being that way and the more they want to keep challenging themselves and the more they're going to face their fears and the more they're going to face their anxieties because facing a fear and anxiety with support and help and the right tools and then allowing them to take that leap and then be successful or fail and then help them to be successful. I mean, that's such a beautiful part of growth. And then maybe they don't have the same trauma that we did growing up or the same like ability to have to be so resilient. I think resiliency is important. I think failure is really important. I think that facing your fears is really important, but you just don't have to do it with so much shame and guilt and bullying and negativity Mm -hmm. and violence and abuse. Like you don't have to motivate people that way anymore. And you can still get those positive outcomes and goals where everyone actually gets to be a team and feel like they're part of a solid community and they get to, uh, they, they, they have that permission to be themselves mm-hmm. and achieve what they want, like themselves, not like mm-hmm. their master. And I mean, I, I don't know how many black belts have taught like their master since thinking it was okay. And thinking that that was part of their lineage. I I'm like, no, but the techniques themselves are the lineage and teaching quality techniques are the lineage, but not the style. Positive reinforcement. I think that's the way you, you've applied it instead of um, the ways things were done. Is... Constructive criticism is okay. Boundaries are okay. Having hard conversations are okay. Saying no is okay. Taking risks, falling down, having failures, um, having feelings. Like we weren't even allowed to have feelings. No. I mean, no. And I, and I don't, I think that actually makes everyone far stronger because if you're allowed to do all of those things, your mm-hmm. reactions are actually going to be legitimately proper, not coming from a place of trying to deal with all your stuff as the filter. And then it comes out. How come you were getting criticized and people were trying to tear you down? What was that about? And why would they want to do that? To well, you? I did have some disgruntled staff that I fired. I'm not going to lie about that. But what do you um, mean? There was some, there was some staff that I, I oh, had staff. to fire. Yeah. Oh, staff. staff. Okay. I thought staff. Yeah. Um, No. And, and also um, martial, like there is some just fantastic martial artists out there, like really, really, really fantastic martial artists and really good studio owners. Like there's so many in Calgary and across Canada and across the world. And I think they're doing such an incredible job. And, but um, for me, some of the criticism came for people that I said, you know, you're not a good fit being at my studio anymore. Um, You know, you're, you're not, you don't, you don't have the same philosophy that and value system that I think is important. And I think that's okay. It's just, we're not a good fit. So you are welcome to go and do whatever it is that makes you happy somewhere else, but it's not with me. Um, Also saying no to people. Uh, You're not going to make a lot of friends when you hold people accountable, especially um, when they've been able to act or behave in a certain way for long periods of time. Mm -hmm. Um, And I say, no, I'm not doing it that way, or this is not acceptable, or we're going to create change, or, you know, you're making a negative impact on my industry or students or facilities or whatever it is. Like, this is unacceptable. Like people don't realize the buck stops with you. It's your name. It's your studio. It's everything and it falls back on you as the entrepreneur as the owner of that business mm-hmm. right. and, I, and I think that there's also a lot of misunderstanding too I mean um there there is a certain way that I think female martial artists look and uh I um I mean for for me I enjoy looking quite feminine and I don't think that I have to prove my toughness um in particular ways, or even like with how I present myself to the world physically. So I am like, I mean, I fought and won gold medals with eyelashes and long blonde hair and red nails. And I mean, I still won. I still did well, even though people are like, well, how on earth, you know, like she's not a real kickboxer, is she? She's not a real world champion. I still have people that talk about that and and that's okay for them. Like it's okay for them. I know what I earned and I made sure I got double digits because that was my goal. And I made sure I won in different aso- uh, associations and um, you're breaking your own barriers for yourself. You're not doing it for others. No, but I knew that in order to create change and do some of the things I wanted to do, I had to like really, really overachieve and 
overdo what I was doing as well as I wanted that for myself too. Mm -hmm. Did that take a toll on your mental health though, when you overachieve? Because oftentimes there's a sacrifice. Yes, there was. There was a severe eating disorder for 10 years um, because I, there was a lot of, um, so a lot of the assaults and trauma and, 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 and sexual trauma that I'd had in my life was for most of my life since I was younger. Um, and I've been able to heal kind of the last five, six years from a lot of the super serious stuff. Is it because it's something you can now control in your life? And one time that you can control that? Is that what that uh, is? Yeah, yeah. Like you're totally on the right track for that. So, I mean, when you don't, when you didn't have enough control over your body to prevent something from happening, um, I mean, an eating disorder is something that I felt like I had a lot of control over. Plus, I mean, I was taught from a very young age that, you know, in order to be successful, you have to be really, really small and tiny and you can't be successful if you gain weight or fight in heavier weight classes or fight bigger girls. Like you'll just lose. Um, I did fight in heavyweight and middleweight divisions weighing in as a lightweight and still winning gold medals. I mean, I had the crap kicked out of me. I've broken my nose nine times. Like I've had my whole, like my whole face has been a mess. I broke so many bones in my life and um, went through a lot of injuries, but I think the eating disorder was a, like I had such intense PTSD and anxiety and depression. And my stomach was in knots anyway. So it was in knots anyway. So I felt sick most of the time I had severe postpartum too, after I had my son. And so, um, I started overtraining, wanting to get compete really quickly, wanting to get back in those ridiculously tight. I'm five foot 10 and I was fighting at minus 55 kilograms, which is 120 pounds. Like it was insanity. And so, I mean, I look like a 10 year old boy. I was super, super sick. I put so much pressure on myself, but I felt so awful on the inside between the abuse, the postpartum, uh, being a small business owner and just trying to figure out what that looked like all by myself and working multiple jobs. And um, I mean, even being a single mom, like it was the one thing in my life that I could control. And I was actually getting positive feedback about it. Like people were like, oh my God, you're so fit. And, Mm -hmm. you know, you made these weight classes and you're doing so well and you're winning and you look so, you know, um, like you're really focused and it looks like, you know, your fight camps are always so serious and, and always so dedicated. And so it was like the one thing I was getting really awesome, positive feedback on, but I mean, I was really, 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 really sick. And I also had, um, like, I had really serious endo- endometriosis and endomyosis too. And so I was in excruciating yeah. pain most of the time as well. And so, um, honestly, I think the physical pain was easier to handle than the emotional, psychological trauma, everything else It gave me something to concentrate on over fixate, give me structure, but it was, it was awful. And I felt like I can control my body. Um, when in other times I couldn't, and in other times I felt like I couldn't control my life. When was that moment though? You, it switched for you where you said enough is enough. This is not healthy anymore. Um, this pain I'm going through physically, I'm done. Actually, it was when I found out that I had uh, a tumor. Um, I was about to fight in, oh goodness. When was it? 2018. And, um, I was in so much pain. I could barely bear it. And I was training like crazy and I was working like crazy. And, um, I mean, the, the dieting was pretty extreme at the time and I was hiding it from everyone, but this tumor became so bad that it derailed my fight career. And I had to choose, um, going for surgery, which I had six surgeries to my abdomen. Um, they're all emergency surgeries, but I'm healthy no cancer. Everything's awesome. Tumor's gone. Um, it was, that was an incredibly awful experience as well. But then I realized that if I'm not healthy, I can't do what I need to do. If I'm not healthy, I'm going to be a crap mom. And I, my son does not deserve that at all. Mm -hmm. Um, and I realized I actually like this, this was hard for me. I realized that I was a really shitty role model for, my students. I was a super terrible role model. And I didn't realize how, how I was projecting that and what they saw. Cause I was so focused on achieving and winning and fighting in those weight classes that I didn't know that I was teaching them through myself, that that was how to find success. 
And so I was pretty, I was pretty disappointed in myself, but I, I, now that I know better, I can do better. Mm -hmm. So I'm a much healthier version of myself and I have really good people in my life and in place to prevent me from going down that road. I mean, I think eating disorders for me felt like an addiction as well. So I have people in my life that when I say, Hey, I want to start cutting calories or overtraining or doing something bad, or I'm feeling bad about myself. They're like, Nope, you're going to lift heavy today. And you're going to eat six times and you're not getting enough protein. Hey, you don't look good today. You know, how, what's your water? Like, what is your, um, you know, what, what, what is your eating? Like, what have you eaten? What have, you know, what, what's your mindset like today? And so I put those, those people and things in place, but also I have a new fight now. And I mean, if I'm unhealthy, I can't, I can't go and do that. What's your new fight? Well, so, I mean, I, I really wanted, um, some higher things in my martial arts career, like for personal goals. Like I really like achievement, a very achievement driven. <laughs> and so, I mean, I need reasons to feel proud of myself. Um, and so just getting my sixth degree in Shotokan karate this Saturday was huge. And then thanks. And then I got my sixth degree, uh, black belt in kickboxing in Germany in July as well. So those two things are important, but then I also am hosting the Canadian national championships for kickboxing and karate in May. And then I finally, after five years of really working on this and trying and bidding and trying to be responsible and working hard, I have the bid for world championships in Calgary for the first time in its history in 2023. Oh my God. This is some huge milestones. <laughs> yeah, I'm so pumped for this because I just, I want to provide so many more opportunities for athletes, especially Canadian athletes and local athletes. And I want to showcase that martial arts can be sometimes anti-combative too. Like, yeah, we have fighting divisions and K1 divisions and kickboxing divisions, but we also have like a bunch of forms divisions and, and little kid divisions and exhibition divisions. And I really just want to see Canada come together and I want to see you know, martial arts in Canada come together. And I just want to see the community grow and the village grow. And I just think it's really exciting. And we haven't had this opportunity before. Where where are you guys located? We are off of um, McLeod Trail and County Meadows Drive. So we are just one satellite south from South Center. So we actually share a wall with the Good Life County Meadows and the County Meadows Movie Theater. We're in that same complex. Yeah. It's so beautiful because we have the 30 foot ceilings. I have 5,500 square feet, three classrooms. I have a store and change rooms and a viewing area. Like I tried to manifest this like said for ever for 20 years. And then I got the opportunity about eight years ago to move in here. And it was the place I dreamed of since I was a teenager of having a martial arts school there. So it happened. And not just any martial arts school. It's one of the largest in Canada. It is. It is. I'm super proud to Mm -hmm. be giving people some more opportunities. And we also have weekly self-defense classes and we also have weekly anti-bullying and situational Mm -hmm. awareness. So how do people follow you before we get going here? Um, You can follow me on Ninja Girl MMA um, on Instagram, but we also have WKU Canada and um, at Five Elements MA which is the studio. You can also find me and my business on LinkedIn. So uh, Megan Cotterell or five elements, martial arts, same with on Facebook. um, Or you can find me at Megan at five elements, Calgary.com. I love it. And what are five elements? So they're the different Asian elements that create everything together. And so for me, um, actually I have a little tattoo with all the, Oh, but I made them the spiritual ones, not the Asian ones, but I wanted to bring North American and Asian martial arts together and so the five elements kind of do that. Like it's wind, water, earth, fire, metal. I love yeah. it. Well, thank yeah, you again, Megan. Yeah. No, it was so nice to chat with you. Yes, I love talking to other martial artists. I'm a business I owner.